when it's spring again, I'll bring again tulips from end. Good afternoon. Today. Tulip vases, which are also called flower pyramids, were made in the Delftware factory in Holland as early as the 17th century. They were made for cut flowers and particularly tulips. They can be found in many stately homes in Europe and in England. Chatsworth House in Derbyshire has quite a collection and also in Hampton Court Palace which were purchased by Queen Mary II, where they can be seen standing in the heart. In 1971, when Bill and I went to Europe in July, we visited the Sèvres porcelain factory in Paris and I saw this one. I immediately made up my mind to make one when I came back home. I also saw examples at the Met but I didn't get around to making one until 1977. So I started to work out how to go about it. I was not able to physically examine one of the originals, but I could see that they were made in separate stackable parts, each one a bit smaller than the one below it. I chose to do seven layers. I had to first make the original part by hand building it in slabs of clay. When this drawing will give you some idea of the complex structure of each of the seven layers of the tulip vase. They were all the same except for the one at the top which had a a round top, um, but they were smaller, each one was smaller than the one above it to create this pyramid effect. And the spouts of course were made separately and added on later. And this little diagram shows you how many separate pieces have to be cut to those shapes and then all joined together. 15, this is one side, 15 uh, on both sides are 30 pieces and then the base at the bottom. In slabs of clay. When they were leather hard, I made two, uh, made two piece moulds in plaster of Paris and from the moulds I was able to slip cast each piece to a thickness of five millimeters, which would result meters, which would result in a much lighter finished product than if they were all handmade. The spouts, the spouts were seven different sizes too. I made the originals on the wheel and then slip cast six of each for the various levels. After the whole vase base and seven levels were made and dried. They were then bisque fired. Then they had to be glazed in white opaque glaze and as was the case with Delftwares, the decoration was painted on to the unfired glaze. I did make some small changes to the design. Usually the vases were stacked on lizards or some such creature, but I decided to make mine to be stacked on six Maltese Terriers. As we Terriers, as we had one at the time. But most of the rest of the decoration was fairly true to the original decoration of these tulip vases. Another and the Maltese Terriers sit on a very large six-sided base. And it is supported by six ball and claw feet. And the piece is signed in the traditional Delft way, surname on top 
initials under that and then underneath that is the date. Each spout is uh, decorated with a monkey's head, as you can see here. And now you can see how all the layers are stacked neatly one above the other. Each layer is a separate vase which can be filled with water for the tulips or the flowers. When completed, it is 1.25 meters high. Here you can see all the different Delft-style decorations that were painted on my tulip vase. Much of the decoration on Delft wares was inspired by the imported Chinese porcelains of the time. And incidentally, this project took me about two and a half months. Another reason for making moulds was that I could easily reproduce them whenever I wanted to. But as it turned out, I only made one other one, which a customer had ordered, but she wanted it totally glazed in a beige colour to match her decor. Sadly, we had a big fire at our studio in 1980 and all the moulds finished up going out with the rubbish. That was a pity. <laughs> and at the gallery in Talgum, the tulip vase was featured many times. Here we had it decorated up for Christmas. Please,